working for yourself. Everything is working for yourself. Chains are breaking for myself.
and you may be seated. All right, let's take a confession this morning. That's the confession, please. My screen is not broken. All right, one to go. As I said to listen to the word of God today, a door of utterance has been opened unto me, and I hear the voice of God clearly speaking to me. This is the way to go, walk ye in it. I listen under the influence of the Spirit of God, and I'm not distracted by anything or anyone. The word of God is good to my spirit. I am strengthened by it this morning. It is wine to my heart, creating joy within me. It is oil to my face, causing my life to shine, giving me victory in everything that I do. As my eyes make contact with the scriptures used in this message, the Spirit of God opens new things to me. He also brings to my remembrance things Jesus once showed me. I come to understand God's system on the earth, and I receive instruction, encouragement, correction, and enablement to live out God's will. Amen. Um, all right, uh, this morning we are continuing uh, on a, um, a subject here, uh, speaking about faith and the operations of the Spirit of God within our heart. And I want to get into something very significant this morning, right? Um, we will have a master class on this, and which will be on the 16th of July. Uh, but I want to, so that we explain it more in detail that we can do in a 40-minute message. Uh, but I want to get into something, but there's a part here that I want everybody to really understand because if you get this, then the pathway to becoming a spiritual giant and doing great things uh, will be edged inside your heart. Now, we're speaking on faith, which is the substance of things that you hope for. And we said that there's a difference between your um, hope and desire or your own personal aspiration. And that you may have a desire for something. You may aspire, all right, to have experience or to be somebody. But that does not necessarily translate to what is called biblical hope. But it is the basis or the foundation or the seed from which biblical hope will be born. Hope is an expectation about something happening in your life on this earth or in your environment that was created within you solely by God revealing to you his will concerning your life or that entity or him making a promise, which really is what it will be, to you concerning your future or the future of that entity. It could be a nation, it could be an organization, it could be a family, it could be somebody. But it's built, it's, it is an expectation created by God himself. And quickly the example I gave was that, let's just say that somebody here says I need uh, 250,000 now. And then, and they need that money by one o'clock tomorrow and they are really desperate for the money. And uh, what happens at 12 or 1 o'clock or 2 p.m., they call me, and then they tell me and say, well, pastor, you know, I'm really disappointed in you. Uh, you know, I did not get the 250,000 naira, all right, to pay for this particular thing. I'm really disappointed. All right, you could have helped me, you didn't help me. And then I say, what are you talking about? Now, that's a desire that they just have, but if it's an expectation and it's hope, then it will start with, let's say the person telling me, not that if you tell me now, I'm going to give money, I'm just saying. All right? Because when you're saying this, one part of your heart is scratching you, that oh boy, oh boy, this thing you're saying can put you in trouble. I'm just saying this. Okay? I'm not saying that you should see me have dancing to me. All right? Okay? 
So I said, well, you didn't tell me. We said, well, if you told me, and then I said, by 12 noon tomorrow, that you needed one, come, all right, to the office, and I will give you the 250,000 naira. Now an expectation is beyond your desire now. Is now an expectation created in your own heart through a promise that I have made to you. In other words, what I have done with that promise is I have taken the responsibility of you getting that money from you and I have transferred it to me. It is no longer going to be in your hands by your ability, by your network or your resources, but I am saying it is now by my own ability, network and resources that this particular thing is going to happen. So when God gives a promise, he is saying, I am taking responsibility for the fulfillment of this particular thing in your own life. And so an expectation is created inside you. So I say, come to the office to see me at 12 noon and I will give you. If I write it down and sign it, and you get to the office, everybody will open up a door to you because they have seen that you have an appointment that you are coming because you have been called or summoned by me to come at that particular point in time to see me inside my office. And it's inside my office that the transference is going to be made where you are going to take possession of the 250,000 naira. If you went, all right, to the marketplace and said, well, pastor, I was standing in the marketplace. I didn't see you there. All right, I went there. Or you went, all right, to your office and said, pastor, well, I was in my office. I, I didn't get it. I will tell you that didn't I say you should come and see me in my office and inside the four walls of my office there is where I'm going to transfer this. Now, having said it that way, we'll understand Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 13. So see what it says here. Hebrews 6 and verse 13, quickly. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying that surely in blessing will I bless thee, and in multiplying will I multiply thee. And after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all dispute. Thus God determined to show the heirs of the promise more abundantly the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil with the forerunner. In other words, God says, after I make the promise, this promise is now an anchor to your soul, the same way you come to, you come to my own office to get the 250,000, you come into his presence behind the veil to get what he has promised. Do you get what I'm saying? The same way you cannot say, I'm standing in the marketplace, pastor, you promised me, I'm waiting in the market, I will tell you. I did not say you will get it in the market. I said, come to my office. God is saying, whatever I tell you, you are not getting it on the streets, you are getting it in my presence. Do you get that? So you say, don't now say, well, let me use the brilliance of my, my own ideas, or let me use my own might, which was a mistake that Moses made. And Moses tried to use his own resources to fulfill the promise of God. Abraham tried to use his own resources to fulfill God's promises and was doing that. And God says, come within the veil. Come into my presence. And the time when Moses came into God's presence, where he saw the bush that was burning and it wasn't consumed, he said, you are now standing on holy ground. That's where the transference was made. That's where the Lord could now begin to part the Red Sea. That's where something entered into Moses and there was that total change. 
So when God makes a promise, don't start in the spirit, get the revelation, and now try to fulfill it in your own flesh. When it tells you something, and we've got to begin to understand and appreciate the depth, all right, of spiritual operations. Kenneth Hagin, before he went home to be with the Lord, he said God kept telling him, there is a move of the spirit that will be lost on this generation. If somebody doesn't teach them, if somebody doesn't tell them, he said, tell them to come into my presence and he will talk about worship sessions that they used to have in the 40s and the 50s and in the 60s where they will be worshiping and there will be absolute silence. He said, even children will not cry. The presence of God will be so strong. He said, in one, a lady got up and started dancing in the spirit and her heel there was getting worn out because she was dancing and dancing, yet they heard no sound. Somebody's dancing in the spirit on God, and there was no sound. And they could see, said the spirit, the presence of God was heavy. See, there is something when we really go in, but you only get into that place. The Bible says it's called the hope of your calling. Or I will see this. It's according. It's when you go with what God has said and you enter into that place. There's a woman in America, Bill Bram. She must be maybe in her 90s now. But, you know, she's an elderly woman. She runs a ministry. She speaks for Brother Copeland. And she built a camp. It's called Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks. It built a camp there where people could just come in and pray. And God gave her the vision. All right. So, and she doesn't have a church. She's just a ministry. And this is an elderly woman. And one day I heard her in Copeland's Kupl- um, meeting saying this. She said one God gave her the vision of that camp. She was worshipping in one of his conferences. And while she was there, she just remained in that place of worship. And God told her, you will not need to tell anybody about this project for it to be financed. She said something entered into her. That it was when the project was 75% complete. She even mentioned it to the Copeland. And this is not a person that had a church where people were giving money constantly. This is supernatural. Are you following what I'm saying here? Where a raven is coming to bring food to you. Where there is no lobbying, there is nothing you could have done to cause a raven to bring food to you. In other words, when we enter into the holiest of all, with the promises of God, the way we are supposed to, what happens is we begin to have encounters in heaven itself that is translated into real events on this earth. And there is a place in his presence. All right? In his presence that this happens. So it tells us we should come in. That's why Hebrews 9.15, it tells us this. And for this cause is the mediator of the new... Oh, man, there's a strong anointing in this place. You people are praying, eh? I pray. In this church, I pray. Uh, you must be praying. Abi? You are not... Ah. Say yes, Pastor, we're praying. Ah, you are being humble. Abby. All right, here was nine. Don't let say we are praying. Right? It's just the grace of God. It's the mercy of God. Okay, okay. It's the mercy of God. Just by his grace. <laughs> All right. For this cause is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are what? Called. Remember, it's the hope of your calling. So you can't come to my office now and say, Pastor, um, 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 I want to go to New York. I, that's not why I say you should come. It is two fifty thousand we're talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Say now. No, I just changed my mind. No, no, no. It's according to the calling. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says there shall be a performance of those things that were told you by the Lord. Don't add to it. Abraham said. <laughs> Abraham said that God was persuaded what God had promised he was also able to perform. I hope you understand what I am suggesting. That without a promise from God, there is a zone in heaven you can enter. Which means that somebody, so if all of us are worshipping here, even though we are singing the same songs, the song should be different according to what God has told you he will do. So you are singing in English the same things, but you are singing in the spirit something else. 
Because to rejoice is to enjoy the feeling of being in possession of something God has given you. Okay? So it says, 9.15 there, it says that, we might, that, 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 that that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. I will explain that. So when you come in, if someone says, well, come in and I'll give you a car. Well, the car costs 10 million. It says, come, I'll give you the car. And you come into the office and I don't give you a car. What I give you, all right, is the exact equivalent of that car. I give you 11 million naira. And now what you are supposed to do is to use 11 million naira in exchange outside the office in order to take physical possession of the car. So God imparts to you the eternal inheritance. We said, who is the spirit? And then you now go out and rivers of living water begin to flow out of your being, either in a demonstration of power or in a demonstration of wisdom in order for there to be an exchange for that particular thing to happen right within your life. However, that's why I came to share this morning, there is what is called divine protocol. And many times we don't respect this in the New Testament because we just think that we're just coming in by the blood and that's just it. All right? There is a way in which you have got to come in in order for there to be a transference of the Spirit into your heart, which means for power or and, or, and or for wisdom when you come in, all right, into the holiest of all. If this condition is not fulfilled, when you go in, there will be no vital contact with God or Jesus in order for that transference to occur. So you may spend time in prayer, but at the end of it, there is no deposit or outpouring of the Spirit into your heart for the fulfillment of what you've just prayed about. And the condition is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 and verse 23. It says, let us draw near with a true heart. In the full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast, hold fast the profession of our faith. The word profession comes from a Greek word which means saying the same thing as or you could say the confession or declaration of our faith. Let us hold fast unto it. Don't let go. For it tells us, put the scripture back on, all right, of our faith without wavering, for faithful is he that promised. So what he promised you, you have got to hold fast to the confession or continuous declaration of that thing, and that is what will determine your experience when you come in the place of prayer as to whether there will be that transference. Now, what we're saying is, if you have a wrong confession, when you come in, even when God has promised you, because it says faithful is he that promised, so the promise has been made. If you have a wrong confession, we'll see this is dual confession, God is at liberty to not do what he promised you. In fact, he said, you will know the breach of my promise. And I'll show this. It's like you telling somebody come in on Wednesday for 250000 and then just before on Monday, you now somebody comes in and says, look, this chap that you probably don't say, no, just says this. Oh, this person I saw him and he was saying all kinds of things about you that you know you don't have the ability to do things. You're not a trustworthy person. You don't keep your word. You just say that. And you see all kinds of things the person has said and you read all of that. You had liberty based on what he has said there to say I'm not doing again. All right? That, oh, is this what the person thinks about me? I'm changing my mind. You are at liberty. 
if a person enters into a covenant with you, there is a clause in every covenant that that person will no longer fulfill their obligation if you do this. Do you get what I'm saying? That's why even when we came into the earth, there was a clause that the day you eat of this fruit, that is it. Every covenant has a clause, which is the place where the other party can exit the covenant if you do this particular thing. And the clause that God has in this covenant is if you start talking anyhow, I will, can, I will show you, I can get myself out of the agreement I made with you. Even when God swears by himself, he says it's over. What you have said is more powerful in this covenant than what I said. W listen to me. What I said I will do is what, subject to what you are saying about your own self. And about what God will do. So how do we know this? That your confession. All right, let's look at this if you waver. Uh, James chapter 1 and verse 4. James chapter 1. All right, um, verse 5. It says that if any of you lack wisdom, and this is that supply of the Spirit for wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth unto all men generously, and upbraideth not, which means he doesn't find fault, which means look for something why he won't he will say, I'm not doing it. He doesn't find fault. All right? However, this is the clause. Next verse. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven and tossed with the wind. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. In other words, he says, a person who comes in prayer, let him not think he will get anything from the Lord if that person wavers. So he says, if you don't, I just want to show you that, listen, you can't just say, it's God, I'm the child, whatever I do, if I go there, you will do it. All right? Let him not waver. If he does, let him not think he will receive anything, the scripture says, of the Lord. All right? So it tells us about the woman with the issue of blood, and we'll see this. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 5 and verse 27, Prior to that, he says she had spent all she had, and she had this condition for 12 years. Then she heard of Jesus, and hope came into her. And then the Bible says she came in the press behind and touched his garment. So this was a weak woman who had lost blood and was struggling, and the press means the multitude, and she moved, and finally she touched, all right, the garment of Jesus. I put the scripture back up. No, the 27. It says, and touched his garment. Now, when she touched his garment, she got healed. Now, there were many people that were touching Jesus, even beyond the garment, holding his head, and because they were thronging around Jesus, who were sick, and nothing happened. That's why Peter, when he said, somebody touched me, Peter said, ah, the disciples told him, can't you see all the people thronging around you? They were sick people touching Jesus, nothing was happening to them. That's why the woman, when she was coming, she was seeing other people touch Jesus and they still remained sick. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you have got to have your own confession that doesn't waver based on the experiences of other people. That something did not work for somebody else is that person's problem. You don't know what is going on in the life of that person. You can't judge God's faithfulness by somebody else's personal experience. Because it says a thousand will fall to your left, ten thousand to your right, it shall not come near you. You don't know the person's confession, and we see this, and you don't even know the person's confession of their heart, even if you may know the confession of their lips. We'll see this here. Because no man knows the thoughts or the things of a man except the spirit of that man. Now, why did she get healed? The next verse tells us, in verse 28, Four, verse 28, it says, for she said, which means the reason why it happened was because she said. For means because she said. For she said. For she said. If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. 
not the other people, but I shall be made whole. So she was saying that prior to the time in which the encounter happened. What you say outside of your time in prayer is what, all right, will form the spiritual capital when you come to pray. All right? You can't be saying, well, if you open your mouth and say this here and say nothing can ever work for any person in this country, when you go to pray, I am telling you that is a spirit of confusion and lack that gets released. I will show you in the scripture. Do you get what I'm saying here? And, all right? So, if you keep saying it, if you say that, well, I'm going to, I, want, I plan on becoming the chief operation officer in this, in this massive multinational I'm working in or the CEO one day, and you go into the cafeteria and you are in gossip and you are speaking negative things about the company and about the leadership of that company there, yet you are praying that one day it cannot happen. That's why it says hold fast, which means there's a temptation to let go of it. Hold fast. So she said, now quickly go to verse 29. So what happened? All right? And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. I have come to believe, and we're going to get to this place in the church, that things will happen straight away. All right? That is not that if something is happening on the outside, we come in for a prayer meeting. At the end of the prayer meeting, we have changed it. Not that we are coming for three years trying to change it. And there are reasons why this thing is not working the way it should work. Because if the confession is wrong before, when you come in, you can't get a straightaway result. If you look at the New Testament, they solved issues in a time of prayer. When they threatened them, they went into one prayer meeting and resolved it. And sometimes they say, well, for somebody, you know, it took blah, 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 blah. and we said all these things because you don't know the person's confession. So, and what happens to people sometimes is they have the wrong confession. Then when you experience the wrong thing, you now come out with a doctrine that is not in the Bible that God's delay is not his denial. There's no way in the scripture it says that. If God wasn't going to do it that day, he will reveal it in the promise, the time appointed for it. Do you get what I'm saying? He didn't tell us just is coming tomorrow. He said that. Do you get this? When it was for Daniel, it says 70 years, Jeremiah, which means this thing, it will take 70 years. But this idea that God is a God that just wastes people's time in prayer should stop. You know, subconsciously we get to it, Africans believe more, listen to me, in witchcraft, deep down, than in Bible and any other book. That's why if you want politicians to be honest, don't give them Bible or any religious book when they are sowing them in. If they give them idol, listen, they won't steal any money. They won't. <laughs> I'm telling you. In their subconscious, that's what they respect. Haven't you seen these uh, uh, TikTok uh, pranks that people will come and bring out something? Do you see how people behave? They take off immediately. Even the ones that may even be, they will say, Jesus, but they'll be moving back. Jesus, moving back. They blow away, huh? Don't touch me. <laughs> And it can be operating at subconscious levels inside people's hearts. I mean, I've said this before. I was watching a movie. I said, this is demonic. At the end of the movie, they took a guy and they said he did something wrong in the village. They took him into the shrine. Instant judgment. And the judgment was that he became paralyzed. He left the shrine immediately. It wasn't 30 minutes. Immediately, he was paralyzed. Then in the movie, he got born again. And they were taking him to church. Three months. <laughs> Pray, fasting. God will do it. By the time the movie ended, the man was walking like this. And then they began to put the song, Jesus is Lord, all the glory. I said, I bind that spirit. In other words, what is happening here is that when it's for the demon, instantly, when it's Jesus, who are going, that's the mindset. And you are speaking glory to God in the highest. So I bind that spirit. <laughs> Bible says straight away. You get what I'm saying? The fountain of blood was dried up. When you go to praise the day of judgment, say every idle word you have spoken. In other words, careless speech counts. So whatever you are reaching for, you must have a con listen, a confession you hold on to. Others may be talking like that, but you don't talk like that. So he says this straight away, the fountain of her blood was dry and she was felt in her body, she was healed of the plague. 
Verse 30 says, And Jesus immediately, so this transference was straight, knowing himself virtue had gone out of him, turned about the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said, Thou seest there thronging there, and you say, Who touched me? In other words, many people can come, but Jesus said, Somebody has touched me. Many people came for the service, but somebody touched me. And that touch is based on the confessions. We'll see this. You have to do this. That's why in Numbers chapter 14, verse 27, quickly you see what words do. Numbers 14. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation? All right, which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel with the murmur against me. He said, say unto them, as truly as I live, say the Lord, as you have done what spoken in my ears, that also will I do. Now, when did you go to God's ears and say, God, God, you never done that. But God is omnipresent, which means every conversation is inside his ears. So when they were murmuring there, you're murmuring inside the cafeteria, it entered his head. He says, say unto them, as true as I live, what you have heard them say, that is what I will do. In other words, all these things that are about to happen, God says that, these things were the things you said, and those are the things I'm going to do. So if you are saying I will fail, I will fail, I will fail, when you come into prayer, this failure is established. Do you get what we're saying here? So look at what it says here. Next verse. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness. They were the ones that said it. And all the numbered according to your whole number from 20 years old upwards which have murmured against me. They are the ones. Doubtless, God tells people, doubtless, without a shadow of doubt, you shall not come into the land I did what? Swore. That I swore that I will give, make you dwell in. I swore by myself. But now I'm saying, without a shadow of doubt, what I, the vow I made is broken. He said, you shall not enter into the land. He says, except Caleb. And Joshua, which means they held to their own confession. Verse 31. But your little ones which you said should be a prey, my friend, please, in God's name, as an adult, you have children. Don't curse your children. Don't say that they don't have any future in this country. Because, listen to me, they've not yet given you a visa to leave. When you start saying they won't have any future in this country, what if they are stuck in the country? Then they live under the influence of your words. Do you get what I'm saying here? Leave your own to your own. Leave them. If you can't say good thing, don't say anything. Because you see what happened to them. They wandered for 40 years because of the words of their children, fathers. See what happened here now. It says, well, you don't... No, no, no. Verse 31. Little ones which said shall be prayed, then will I bring in, and it shall know the land you despise. However, look how it says. Verse 32. As for your kind shall fall in this wilderness. Verse 33. And your children shall wander in the wilderness for what? 40 years. They will get in, but they wander. All right? Until their carcass be wasted, or your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. Verse 34. After the number of your days, you search the land 40 days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities 40 years, and you shall know the breach of my what? Promise. That you will experience what it means for me to break my promise. That's what God is saying. So why didn't they enter into the promised land? Why can't people get things done? It's not because of the presence of giants on the outside, but it's because of what's going on inside. The limitations are always within and not without. It says in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 19, it tells us, so we see they could not enter in because, not because of the giants, but because of their unbelief. Now, what do we mean by unbelief? It was because they were double-minded. For it tells us in that James chapter 1 and verse 7, first before 8, let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord, for a man, it says, this next verse, it says, a double-minded man is unstable. Now, it didn't say a triple-minded man. It says a double-minded. 
And because that's why the scripture tells us, Elijah said, why do you halt between two opinions? What he's speaking to here is a very powerful concept, and this is what you need to understand. And once you get this, all right, growth to become a spiritual giant and doing things will be massive. You have what is called your conscious mind, which means what you're conscious of. And then you have what is called your subconscious mind, which means there are two distinct parts inside your mind. That's what the scripture calls the renewing of the mind. Now, you may consciously want something done. In your conscious part, I want to do this. But in that subconscious part, it wants something else other than what you consciously want. And until you align the subconscious and the conscious part with what God has shown you, all right, there is not going to be that appreciable and progress that will be made. Okay? And that's where that unbelief is. Until that happens, when there is no alignment between both, results are impossible. Where there is that alignment between both, it is impossible for a person to fail. Let me give an example here between subconscious here. Because your conscious mind is what you consciously, logically are thinking about and saying. Your subconscious has to do with your habits. So, yeah, you can wake up now and say that I'm going to, this is your vow now, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 10 kg in the next two months. How are you going to do that? I will change what I eat. I will wake up in the morning and do very good exercises. Is that going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. This is my determination. This is my purpose. This is what will happen. You left church. You just said it at the door of the church. And then you are going to a cousin's party. And when you got there, there was this velvet looking cake and they were pouring ice cream. And you said, please, can you pass me? What you said consciously is one thing. That is your subconscious that still wants cake. You sleep that night to wake up. The alarm rings to tell your conscious mind it's time to get up and go and lift weights. The subconscious says, listen to me, I cannot kill myself. because." <laughs> That's when all those slangs start coming out that you've been hearing from childhood. That's the subconscious. And then you toss. Are you following me saying that? The subconscious will always override the conscious. See, there are two confessions in the New Testament, and both confessions must align. There is the confession of the heart, and there is the confession of the mouth. What many people are doing is the confession of the mouth, which is the lips, but the heart is saying something else. That's why God said, in Isaiah, He said, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. Now, the funny thing is that the subconscious, all right, only reaches for what it has already experienced. Anything new, the program has to be consciously changed. Now, this is what I want to show you, how this thing gets changed. So there's the conscious part. The conscious part is, listen to this, all right, let, let me just go to the so there's a double confession. Romans chapter 10, verse 6. Let me cut it down and show this here. All right? Now, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart. So there is a silent confession of the heart. And there is a loud confession of the mouth. The heart and the mouth must be in agreement. That's why Jesus said, whosoever will say to this mountain and will not doubt in the heart, which means the heart is in full support of what is coming out of the lips. Do you get what I'm saying here? You say, well, and this is the truth. I wish at this particular point in time, I had this kind of money inside my account and my children were going to this kind of school. The truth about the matter is that the only reason why it is not so as you are seated is that your subconscious wants something else apart from that thing and you don't know it. You don't. That's why it's called someone. Peter told Jesus, it's not that he was lying. He said, Jesus, I will not deny you. He said, Jesus, I'll be with you. Jesus said, that's your conscious mouth, mind, the mouth talking. 
at subconscious level. At subconscious level. Before the cock crows, you will say you don't know who I am. A small child came. You, now, consciously, you can say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Consciously. But he that is in the world, when he appears, you can't find yourself running in the next direction. Consciously, if he ask you, do you have more authority? Are you superior to animals? You say yes. Do you have dominion over them? Yes. If a lion comes here, you might be on the other place here. But consciously, you're saying something. But subconsciously, all the programs and films you have watched have told you that when a lion comes, go the opposite way and you are disappeared. That's what you do. So until that area, which is called the heart, is brought into alignment with what you consciously know, there will be failure and frustration. That's what that father said when he said, Jesus said to him, he said, if thou can believe, he said, all things are possible. And the man got it. He said, Lord, I believe. That's consciously. But help thou my word unbelief. That's at subconscious levels. In other words, you will not believe what that man was saying. I consciously want my, bro my son healed. But at subconscious parts, he's saying something different than what I really want. And until you bring, E.W. Kenyon said, wherever you have the heart and mouth in agreement and they enter into the place of prayer, he said, you are going to see power. One day I was listening to Dr. Crawford Dollar. He said, listen, in his church, he said, listen, he was preaching. He said, stop. He said, listen, listen, all these things I've said. He said, let me tell you the real thing. He said, you know how we build this dome without money? He said, we brought our heart into perfect agreement with our mouth concerning this dome, and that's how it came into existence. One time, Brother Copeland asked Dr. Bill Winston, he said, how did you buy this mall? He said, the first time God told me about the mall, I knew it was God's will, but I had unbelief in my heart. So I didn't try any negotiation until I changed the state of my heart from unbelief to the place of faith. He said, then we approached the mall. So there is a change, and you'll be amazed. See, let me just say to you how you know whether you want something or you don't want it. It's shameful, but it is so. If a friend of yours, this subconscious, buys a very expensive car, and you say, man, this car is wonderful, but something inside you moves, and you're not very happy that he has gone that far, that thing that moved is what's keeping you from getting it. Now, you won't say it all. You, you will say, that's why it says, the man says, eat and drink, but his heart. You can say, oh, brother man, brother man. <laughs> Sister. All right? See, I went to preach one time in London Faith Seminar. I told people, I said, say, how many of you here asked somebody to come for this meeting? Yesterday, they called you and said they will be at the meeting. This morning, they said they will be at the meeting, but they are not here. Put up your hands. 90% of people put up their hands. I said those people did not lie. But they were not programmed to come. Do you get what I'm saying? They consciously said they are coming. But when they woke up, and the weather was a bit then, are you, you understand what I'm saying? I, I've introduced some people that no matter what you do, they come late. You don't know. Even when there's nothing on the road, something will happen for them to come late. That means there's a program running. One time, Kenneth Hagin said, look, my, I have holes here. My children are not going to schools. I'm not going to. God said, if you are willing and obedient, you eat the good of You are not willing to have the money. I said, God, that can't say that. He said, you are not willing. Do you know people just say, I want to prosper? Many people don't want to prosper from their heart. Do you know that the way we've been programmed, anybody who is in politics or government is corrupt? Are you following what I'm saying? So if they tell you that you should come into government, you look at it, that before you know what's happening, they'll start calling me all kinds of names. You don't want to do it at subconscious levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Because you don't want that. You don't, you don't want, you can just look at it. You don't want the name of your family on the, on the front page where they'll be saying something where it, it may not have happened that way, but that's the way they are saying it. 10 billion is missing. Is this man, everybody will believe you are the one that carried the money. 
Then you go for uh, uh, your niece is getting married. Then they call the name. He say, is it that family where that man carried 10 billion? People look at it and say, well, I don't want this wahala. I'm not doing it. So at subconscious levels there, you just may not. So I want to talk about this communication here. I'll bring this to a close. So in Romans chapter 7, we see this verse 19. Quickly, it tells us here in verse 19, right? For the good that I will do, I do not. That's what we're saying. But the evil which I will not, that I do. He was talking about this subconscious and conscious. I want to do good. But there's some program on the inside. Let's then say that verse 20. It says, now if I do that which I would not, it is no more I, which means that there's something in control of my being. Beyond what I consciously, the same way somebody says, I want to fast or I want to lose weight. And then they just, they, all kinds of things begin to come in. So how then do you change that communication? Now let me tell you the difference between it. Conscious and conscious. When you are learning to drive, and they put you inside the car and they said, talk, you know, you hold the steering like this. Huh? You hold the steering. If somebody's talking to you, you say, don't talk to me. Don't, don't talk to me. Don't, you're using your conscious mind to drive. Don't, 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 you see, you're, all right? Is that the break? Then you're there. Don't talk to me. Someone says, have a drink. No, 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 no. You're sweating like this. But when you've mastered driving, if not for the law, you'll have had one phone, you'll be playing music, eating something, using your elbow. Are you following what I'm saying here? What I'm trying to bring is that for the promise to come to pass, you might be consciously trying to make it, but when you get it into your subconscious, your elbow is like this from a position of rest. Your lines are falling into pleasant places. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They are saying that you are just lucky. It is not just luck. You are programmed for those events. A man came to speak somewhere on the laws of success. Somebody before him came out and said that, listen, he said, let me tell you something. He said, what? He said, I must make sure I keep to time because everywhere I go to speak, I always take the time of the other speaker. So I will make sure I keep to time. So he looked at it and said, and said he was speaking, speaking. He went beyond his time, but he was looking at his wristwatch going beyond his time. At one point, he now stopped. He said, my wristwatch has stopped working. Is there a problem? That other man had seven more minutes. He had taken all his time. You see, the other man came and said, there's no need for me to say I had with all this thing, but the principle of success has just been shown you. This, my friend here, has been saying that anywhere I go to speak, I always take up the time of people. And because he's programmed to take the time of people, his wristwatch stopped in order for that program to come to pass. I'm saying if you are going to succeed, once you can renew your subconscious to a level, things will happen that are beyond your control for what you are saying to come to pass. Do you get what I'm saying? Without changing that part of your being, you are just forming. Deep down, you know. You know, say you don't go walk, but you are just forming. You enter into prayer, doing what is called Hail Mary. You know what Hail Mary is. It's a Catholic prayer, not a drink. Because some of you hear Hail Mary, sometimes you are thinking, all right? You didn't go to Catholic school. Didn't you know prayer of Hail Mary, full of grace? How many people? I want to know, I want to know those who are praying as children. I hear. I won't call you to recite it now. All right. Okay. But it's like you just take a ball, you don't have anything. At the end of a match, they say it in America, when you've tried everything, it's not working. You just take the ball and just say, Hail Mary, full of grace, <laughs> and throw it. Whatever it lands, let it land. Right? And that's the way some of us go about our lives. We form like it's spiritual, but we're just taking a ball and throwing it. So let me just close. This is what we're going to look at, how to do that. There has to be a communication between your conscious and subconscious in order to get it, which means to bring about that renewal. And the way you do that is by repetition. That is why you remember nursery rhymes. The only problem is that you've gotten too big to use the way you learn things to master life. It says if you're going to enter the kingdom, you come as a little child. If we start nursery rhymes now, you, you will remember because it's ingrained in your subconscious. If you say black bag, you start smiling. Blah, blah. You remember your childhood. Are you any room? Yes, ah, yes, ah, three, black. But the one you were reading yesterday, you have forgotten. <laughs> the mathematics they taught you, you can't remember. When your children bring for homework, you say, I'm coming. <laughs> you open the book and check very well before you are disgraced. 
But if they start nursery rhymes, you'll be doing the nursery rhymes with them because you recited it into your consciousness. Whatever you want to cause to come to pass, you've got to recite it. Do you get what I'm saying here? And what you're going to do, we're going to talk about this, is sit down. I mean, we saw the, the thing last week. Sit down, all right, with your target statement. I'm going to look in detail how you do it. It must be definite. Choose a time you won't be disturbed by external things. This is a spiritual moment, a quiet time. If the television is on, on the outside, your subconscious will be picking that television thing and it will interfere with the confession you are making. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it has to be a time of absolute silence. You start because the lights are on, because you are still reading it for the first time. But when you have mastered it, you put off the lights so that there's no interference with your eyes. All you are hearing and seeing is what you are saying. Do you get what I'm saying here? And then as you are declaring it, the second thing about it is you are imagining the experiences as you are declaring it. We're going to the third thing you are doing is that as you are reading through that meta story which is calling into existence, and if you can do this one, and we are all working on this one, if you can do this, you become a giant. Put one, you write it down, sit down on that spot, and say to yourself between 50 to 100 times, if you can do it, if you can do it, you will see something. Because as you start saying it, the areas of contradiction, all right, you will know that this thing is not sitting right. We'll show how you change it, which means the wordings may not be right. You change it properly. That means what you are saying is not that. You'll change it. Second thing that will happen is this. And I was thinking in my mind whether I should go this deep in teaching it until the assistant pastor of the Victoria Island Church sent me a message on Tuesday. She said, Pastor, it works. She said, we had a meeting where I was to do a presentation. And I wrote down the promise of God as a story of what happened during that time of presentation. She said, I wrote it, and when I was making the declaration, he said, we needed, I needed them to release $1 million to my unit for a particular project. Said, when I read it there, you will get the inspiration on to do certain things or what you should say when you are actually doing it that will trigger. She said, exactly as I saw it inside my heart, it worked. Said, we have the $1 million. Are you following what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is inside you. Once you get to that subconscious, you are going into the resources of the Holy Spirit. Word of knowledge. Word of wisdom. He will show you things to come. You start delving into the resources and the inheritance that God has placed on the inside of you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for a word. By the power of your spirit, I ask that you establish us with this truth, expand it within our consciousness, and let it bring forth fruit in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, please, um, for the, we only have 3,000 seats. Now, the reason why we have 3,000 seats for this master class is that, you know, it, it's Zoom. It's $929 for 3,000 seats. It's 2,400 and something dollars for 5,000 seats. I don't want to spend 2,000 something four hundred dollars. Are you following what I'm saying here? And you tell me consciously, I will be there. But subconsciously, you will not show up. I can't use $1,800 to be practicing on subconscious. Okay. Are you following what I'm saying here? So please, you can put up the, if you want to register, hmm, but the seats will finish. Uh, ah, you live in wait, well, if they can scan that. Or go to insightsforliving.org, faith masterclass. All right? Or you can use the QR code to do that. It's going to be on the 16th, that's Saturday, 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. Now, let me just say this. I am not making it available after I've taught it. I say, well, I was busy. And it, that's your subconscious now. I had to go somewhere. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't make it. Okay? If you have missed it, you have missed it. You have missed it. You can't go and meet Bishop Edgar and say, the things you are teaching in Bible school that you recorded, can you please give it to me? The reason is this. We want to say some things that you, I don't want people sharing in public, just giving out everywhere because you have to have had the foundation that we have been teaching to be able to get into it. All right? So please, don't go and call a friend that doesn't know what we are saying. No. I say, come for this masterclass. They will be confused, though, because I'm not going to start from hope and, and all this one. I'm just going to go straight into it. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
I know they are your brother, they are your sister, you love them, but it's you that should come by yourself. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay, then. God bless you all. Ah, oh, you are, you, are, you are trying to register. No, they didn't clap. Before they used to clap, I was wondering that maybe I didn't preach well. All right, then. <laughs> Shall we stand up to our feet as we begin to give thanks to God? What makes the word works is first of all thanksgiving. Let us begin to give him thanks consciously from our minds. Begin to thank him because the seed is multiplied in thanksgiving. The seed of God's word is multiplied in thanksgiving. Begin to thank him for the entrance of his word that brings light and understanding into your heart that is simple. Begin to thank him for the seed of God that has been planted. He says that certain seeds were sown on certain soil and they germinate. And some other ones were sown on a certain soil and the birds of the hair came to pick it up. But in thanksgiving, you see the seed multiplied. Begin to thank him for the word of God that has come forth with power. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for the opportunity to hear this word. Give him all the praise and all the thanks for the opportunity to hear the word of God this morning. Thank him because it has landed on the right soil and it will germinate. Give God praise. Be deliberate about giving him praise and giving him thanks this morning for the word of God. Open your mouth and begin to thank him. Give him all the praise that is due him because the word came at the right time. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Also, let's start from verse 22. Mark chapter 9 and verse 22. It says, and often he has thrown him both into fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Verse 23, it says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are what? To him who believes. Verse 24, then he says, immediately the father of the child cried out and said, with fears, Lord, I believe, help my home believe. In every area that there is no alignment in your words and your subconscious, begin to pray to God that God help my home believe this morning concerning the work of my hands for the things I am believing you for. Lord, I come to ask you, help my home believe that there will be a persuasion in your subconscious that God will persuade you for you to be able to call those things that be not as though they were there must be a persuasion begin to ask him lord help my own belief that i will believe that i'm the head and not the tail indeed that i will believe that all things work out for my good that i will believe every single one of your promises every single one of your promises you have got to break down that stronghold. The stronghold which means that what God has said to you, you do not believe, you do not have sufficient faith to believe it. Ask him to help your home believe. That God will persuade your heart. That God will break down every walls that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God. Every thought that is exalting itself against the thoughts and the knowledge of God that God is going to break every one of them down that as you read the promises of God you will believe it that as you behold the scriptures you will believe it help my home believe help my home believe help my home believe help my home believe, help my home believe. ask him to help your home believe this morning Help my home believe. Help my home believe. Ask him to help your home believe. 
Ask him to help your home believe. Pray it passionately. If you can pray in the spirit, pray it passionately. That God will help your home believe this morning. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you have called me. Take me deeper than my feet will ever wander. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you As we go into the course of this week and begin to practice your word, there will be an alignment with the words of our mouth and our heart. A perfect alignment to bring about your promises in our lives, over our children, over the works of our hands, over the ministry, over every single aspect of it in our health, that every man will go out this week. They will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Causing wondrous things to happen in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. Give him a big, big hand. Big, give him a big, big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated for a minute. If you're born in the month of July, if you're born in the month of July, come outside right now. If you're born in the month of July, come out right now. Put your hands together for everyone born in the month of July. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for them. Come forward. Come forward. Dance. <laughs> In me like the time and tears. I to repay so the the info desk units of the covenant nation also came out for thanksgiving can we see your hands put your hands together for the lord info info desk all right so they are here all right we uh because of time we're using how do they call it now one stone to kill all right, this is many beds this time. All right, I know some of us have testimonies, all right? Three testimonies. We're going to take them immediately after this particular um, session, all right? So please, can we stand up to our feet and stretch our hands? See, this is not a traditional stretch our hands towards people. Every single seed of God's word you give back into people's life will come to you in multiples, 
all right? So stretch your hands towards them and begin to prophesy into their lives. Begin to prophesy into their lives. Begin to sow seeds of God's word over these people who are celebrating in the month of July. Begin to thank him for them. Speak life into their lives. Speak the life of God over them. Say to them, decree God's word over their lives. Decree God's words over their lives. That their going out is indeed blessed and their coming in is indeed blessed. Speak faith, speak life, surround them with faith, surround them with love. That their experience in the course of this month and throughout the end of this year, they would experience God like never before. That God will cause his face to shine upon them, granting them peace in every area. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And so I declare over you, this is the word of the Lord over you and the entire congregation. It says in Joel chapter 2 and verse 23, Be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you former rain faithfully and it will cause the rain to come down for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. It says to you, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dwelt wondrously with you. My people shall never be put to shame. I decree over you, for the rest of this year, you will never be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of T.C. Enigomu. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall not be put to shame. I decree over you, your household, the work of your hands, that every single time you call upon the name of the Lord, it will answer you speedily in the name of Jesus Christ. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. The mountains and hills will break forth into singing. The trees of the field will clap their hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will never beg for bread in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has healed you from the crown of your head right to the soles of your feet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your work, the works of your hands will produce bountiful harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your testimony will be who has begotten me all these things. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks for this that you have done. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Hey, my God is good. Oh. Hey, my God is good. Oh. Hey. Amen. All right. I have a testimony that I need to read, and I need to read it to you because um, there were some practices of God's word in here. All right. It's a, bit, it's a pretty long word. We have three testimonies as well. We're going to take them in quick successions. All right. Um, I've longed for a chain for job for three years. Last year, November, I got to this desire with a multinational company, but lost it. It was very painful. Applying the teachings from pastor's message, I took this pain to, to God in worship and got over it. I thought I had moved on when I got a call from a junior colleague that, that he was leaving. When I inquired to know where he was going, it turned out to be the same opportunity I lost and the pain resurfaced. I had to take it back to God in worship. A couple of weeks after, I was interviewed by two organizations the same week during one of the interviews. I knew I performed woefully and couldn't decipher why. I had been ruminating on Wavbeck 2022 team, the power of God's mercy, 
which the Sunday school also adopted in the first quarter. I saw the raw power of God's mercy during the interview when I was told they would, uh, they would have to reschedule the interview due to my poor performance because they believed the interview did not represent me. I took this outcome to God in worship again. The panel was extremely impressed with the rescheduled interview and I was recommended to meet the executive management team and they were impressed. Days after, I was contracted, contacted for negotiation. There was a blackout during negotiation when the HRM said they couldn't match my ask and immediately closed the conversation without, without any counter offer. In as much as I needed the job, I didn't want to revert to the initial offer. About three weeks later, my wife attended 120 Minutes with Jesus. I was unavoidably absent and got a confirmation from Pastor Dyer's message about the widow that took a case to Elijah. The trust of the message is, why didn't she take the case to Elijah when her husband was still alive? My wife prayerfully took the case to one of the ministers who suggested we should have a time of prayers together. Ten days after the session of prayer, I had a nudging to contact the organization to see if the position was still available and also to reopen the negotiation. To my amazement, my new request was accepted and I was subsequently asked to go for medicals. There is a medical condition which I have been making healing confession for and also taking medications for the past one year that I disclosed which, which almost became a showstopper. I was asked to go for further tests which lasted two weeks upon subsequent tests and examinations. The report shows no traces, thereby providing the leeway for the employment contract. I thank God for this new job and many other things he has done for my family. I also appreciate him for the great privilege to be part of this great family, TCN. God bless Pastor Kojo and all the ministers with the grace and wisdom for impact. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. I'm here to testify to the goodness of God in my life and in the life of my family. Um, this is the way the Holy Spirit, you know,
could tell who the person was. And fortunately, the, in November, the Holy Spirit had just inclined in me that women, for every negotiation you do, ensure that you have written evidence. In. So for any discussion I have with suppliers, I always documented it. And that was around November last year. You know, just dating it back, I was able to provide all the evidence. I dropped my letter on the 31st of May. And on Sunday, the, I think it was 3rd of June, um, one of the leadership in my, my department called me and said, Wumi, congratulations. When I read the reports of the investigation, I was like, Wumi is so detailed. All, everything I provided, it was found that any, all the claims was not substantiated and I was able, you know, they, they did um, send forth for me last, um, um, last week and, you know, I was, I was like, God, you perfected this testimony for me and I'm indeed, I'm grateful. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read out my testimony just to keep me on track. Um, I've come to return all glory to God for his mercies towards me. Last year was very rough for me at my place of work. Um, towards the end of the year, I had lost every sense of self and I struggled with imposter syndrome. At that point in time, I knew I had to take a break from work to take time to heal. I saved up. Um, following lessons I learned from community group, and I resigned in November. Wavbeck came and went, and then after Wavbeck, the reality dawned on me that I was jobless. So while studying the Bible um, towards the end of January, the Holy Spirit led me to Daniel chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. That says, select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. And then the, vast, the part that spoke to me was, was that make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning and are gifted. I understood from this scripture that an interview is a selection process. But then I had to have a level of skill to be selected. So I invested myself in online courses and training specific to where I wanted to be. Then in March... News broke out about toxic workplaces, and I broke down. I will cry, and I will stay awake at night. I realized that I still had unresolved grievances towards my former workplace, and I needed to forgive. Then the Holy Spirit showed me Matthew 10, verse 8, where Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. give. I took time to pray and bless my former boss and the organization. It was only after this that I was able to recognize job posts suitable for me to apply to. Prior to then, I would scan the internet for hours and then I wouldn't see anything. I returned to God in prayer and then got another word, Amos 9, chapter 13 to 15. I based my confessions on that particular word. I set an alarm for the watches where I said my confessions and I worship God. The content of the confession was very detailed and specific, highlighting the salary I wanted to get, the, cult the culture of the place, and everything I wanted. After this, I started getting offers from other companies. On the 14th of May, during my morning devotion, I got another word, Psalm 32 verse 8. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. That same day, on the evening of May 14, I got a message scheduling me for an interview. A former colleague had referred me. I went for the interview, and the same day after the interview, um, on May, um, the following week, the, I got a response that had been given the offer. Everything I asked God for, everything I confessed, matched the offer that was given to me. I have come to thank my Heavenly Father who is the master orchestrator and who has made everything beautiful in his time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I was wondering if we're not going to have a man come to testify. Good morning, church. Um, I've come to give thanks to God for not allowing my family to cry. Some three weeks ago, um, I prepared to go to work, so um, my younger brother that's staying with me at the moment um, opened the gate for me. I drove out of the house, parked on the other side of the road, um, waiting for him to join me because it was, I was going to drop him off at um, an INEC office close by. So he joined me and we left. 
unknown to me, something had happened just about one or two, two minutes after we left. So when I came back, nobody had told me anything all day. I came back from work. I noticed something in, in the area. But when I got inside, my mom that had come to the house came, hugged me, kissed, and started crying. And she, it was tears of joy. The wall where I had parked my car is about 10 to 12 feet tall. That wall had fallen just about a minute after we'd left. It would have caused property damage, bodily harm, and probably death. Now, this is very significant because in 1983, my father suffered the same kind of accident. And the devil wanted to repeat a pattern or establish a pattern in the family. And so when I thought about it, I remembered I was just smiling because the devil came too late. Not now anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know who I am in Christ. And I know what happened. The angel of God had held that wall and didn't allow it to fall. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say, <laughs> hallelujah, I'm not going to say any other thing, all right? Some of these testimonies are triggers for everyone. They are triggers, they are things that you've got to practice, they are things that enter into you. When pastor was saying that, you know, um, you know there was an unction, when we call for, so this is not a gimmick, it's not a gimmick when we call for prayer meetings, all right, and people show up to pray together. Things happen. Mighty things happen. There was a word strongly for us yesterday as we gathered with the core team. All right, one of the words is this that people will begin to dedicate their houses. Now, we had received all these testimonies that are coming through, you know, people receiving their jobs and all of those things. We had received a word for this long ago. We are received that none of us will, every one of us will be gainfully employed, not just employed. We actually even pegged a certain salary on it. Shall we stand up to our feet as we give thanks to God for these testimonies? Give God, give God thanks for these testimonies. Give, it, give God praise and give him thanks. That none of, none of these things will return to God void. Every testimony that has been given will not just be permanent this is the least that they would ever be this is the least that they would ever be for the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day father we give you praise we give you thanks in jesus name amen let's put our hands together for the lord you may be seated for a minute join us on tuesday we will be concluding on the conversation ceaseless flow of abundance. We stopped at the conversation on building an altar before God and we're going to continue that conversation because God uses the broken things in your life to build an altar. An altar is not a fine place and so how do you use those things to forge ahead? Join us. You can also be, it's also going to be on Mixella. God bless you. Have a great week. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Hallelujah. We should tell of the goodness of God. So as that, as those testimonies were being shared, some of you were getting nudges in your heart. That, whoa, okay, I remember. God, I remember. If you remember, then tell of the goodness of God. God is good. And if you have tasted and if you have seen, 
then you should share to encourage someone. It is not pride. No. You are encouraging someone's faith. These people keyed into someone else's testimony. That's the pattern we've seen. They keyed into someone's testimony. So continue the chain, right? Don't drop the ball. Hallelujah. What to media? Confession after the message, please. Okay, let's declare this boldly as we go into another week. Ready? Go. I declare this week the lines are fallen onto me in pleasant places. My steps are ordered by the Lord. Every day I open my mouth wide, declaring the things I believe, calling into existence those things I see with my inner eyes as though they are. And God in return daily loads my life with benefit, advancing my position. Morning by morning, he opens my ears to hear his voice and has positioned me by his instructions such that others call me fortunate, lucky, and blessed by what has occurred every day. I declare wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, I have gotten wisdom and with her understanding. I call wisdom my sister and understanding my closest friend. I have exalted wisdom and she has promoted me, making my life glorious. She has brought me to the place of honor because I have embraced her. I have listened to her and received her sayings. And so by the decisions I make, years are added every day to my life. God has taught me in the way of wisdom. He has led me in the right paths. When I go out this week, my steps do not end in dark, narrow passages, nor do I waste time making wrong turns. Amen. 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 And if you're worshiping with us for the very first time at the Covenant Nation, Igomu, the Covenant Place, we would like to warmly welcome you into the presence of God and in our midst. So please lift your hands if today is your first time worshiping with us. Kindly lift up your hands. Show of hands. Anybody? Anybody? Anybody beside you? Anybody? Please. Okay, I can see someone over there. You're welcome, sis. Please rise up on your feet. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, please rise up on your feet. Okay, there's also someone at the back there. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. Welcome, sir. Welcome, ma. God bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Is this how we... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. I know you guys are used to having visitors and, you know. But it's a big deal. We welcome you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. On behalf of our senior pastor who ministered today, um, and on behalf of his wife, Pastor Pojo Yemade and Pastor Tui Oyemade, we welcome you to the Covenant Nation, Igomo. God bless you for coming. We would like to give you a warm reception. We would like to also give you a gift and also know about you and, you know, want to see you again so please take your bibles your bags everything you came with and kindly move to my right there is a there is a lady over there who is going to attend to you she's going to give you a card for to get your information and she's going to also hand you a gift please move to my right that's your left yes thank you hushers you're welcome. God bless you. God bless you. Let's put our hands together as they make their way to the reception. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, ma. Okay, if you know the song playing, let's, let's sing together. Let's usher them with that. All right, make it louder, make it louder. 
Let's go. that song you are new you're not old school if you know the song you are very ancient yes you're welcome god bless you okay at this time we're going to take our offerings and our tithes cheerfully we're given to the lord and we're going to take uh, offering and tithes declaration, Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. So please, you find an envelope on your seat. For the newcomers, you find an envelope on your seat. And if you need a tithe envelope, please indicate by lifting up your hands. The ushers will give you one so you can put together your offering and your tithes. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Thank him for the opportunity to give out of the abundance that he has given unto you. Thank him for the grace to give cheerfully from the depth of your heart. Let your heart rejoice. Let your heart be glad. Thank him for the privilege. Thank him for the testimonies. Thank him for what he's done and what he's yet to do. Amen. Let's declare together 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Are we ready? Are you ready? Okay, it's personalized, so please say it perfectly. Are you ready? Let's go together. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to me in abundance, so that I, always and under all circumstances, and whatever the need, I'm self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Amen. Thank you. Please hand it over into the offering basket with the ushers. God bless you. We'll take our digital announcements now. If you're giving electronically, that's the information on the screen. Just take a snap so you can send your offering via your online um, bank app. We'll take the digital announcements now. Thank you. Start your day with our daily corporate prayers and declarations. Join us online every morning at 5 a.m. West African time via www.mixler.com forward slash covenant. Do you have a business idea you've been struggling with and can't get to fully flesh it out? Or do you have a business you need help mastering structure, processes and making profit? Covenant Capital Business School CCBS announces its Entrepreneurship Management Program EMP 2022 Virtual Session. Registration opens Monday 4th July 2022 and closes on Sunday 24th July 2022. To register, kindly go to www.ccbs-register.covenants-capital.org. Please note that the EMP classes are virtual. The Covenants Nation premarital classes for the year 2022 has started. Are you preparing to get married? Then join our premarital classes. Kindly go to www.insightsforliving.org forward slash C3 premarital for more details. We hope you were blessed by that powerful message. Unfolding the Mysteries of the Gospel comes up next Tuesday, the 5th of July by 6.30 p.m. We continue our discussion on ceaseless flow of abundance. It will also be streamed via mixelarv.com slash tcn igomu center just in case you can't make it. The message was indeed a blessing last week, so be sure you don't miss this edition. We are praying next Saturday, the 9th of July by 7 p.m. Join us as we pray for the supply of the Spirit for Sunday services and other important things. The and you're welcome back, our online family. That was a powerful service. Won't you say? I was 
very, very seriously impacted, and I believe so were you. I mean, starting from the wonderful testimonies we just heard from three people, I mean, multiple testimonies in the life of one particular lady, something about a job, and one that concerned even the fruit of the womb from way back. You can never underestimate the power of giving and sharing your testimonies when they come into your life. The, the essence of it is to also encourage someone else to be able to tap into it or for someone to know that whatever they might be going through and trying to overcome by their prayers and the exercise of faith um, is not theirs alone and there are other people experiencing it and that God has done it in the lives of others. So those are wonderful testimonies. I want to encourage you online to also share yours as God been faithful to you in any way and we know at TCN that God has been faithful indeed to all of us. So do not hesitate, do not be reluctant to share your testimonies, please feel free to. And uh, as you do so, um, prayerfully we believe it will encourage others to also search deep because there are some things that we take for granted and God will grant us all the grace to be able to equally share. You might not be able to do it on stage, but I mean the, the online platforms are there for you to also do so. So we look forward to hearing your testimonies or listening to your testimonies and getting others to share and gain from it. Uh, God bless you as you do so. I warned you at the beginning of the uh, service that this one is going to be a different one because it is like the combination of all that pastor has been teaching about our faith journey. Um, now bringing to bear the important protocol that is necessary for the exercise of that faith with regards to uh, uh, putting together the confession of the faith based on the word that we have received from God which has given us uh, the evidence of that thing that we look forward to and you would agree with me it was a powerful 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 one i took a lot away from 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 it uh, three core things that i mean became very clear in terms of what is the protocol uh, of, of of your confession the first one is uh, that you must come in faith and you must hold fast that faith and that uh, it is not um, know, it is not the time when you are believing God for something and you are confessing something for you to begin to have second thoughts or to be second guessing yourself or the word of God that has been given to you. So that's the one, one, the first thing, hold fast to your faith. The second thing is that you must be consistent in, in, in doing it. You cannot afford to waver or to be double-minded. And that was the scriptural ref uh, reference to a man who is double-minded in the process of that we can lose out on what we are confessing for so once you have received your word and you are confessing in faith you stick to it and you do not waver from it do not allow things in the environment to move you away from the promise that god has given you and then the most important thing which kind of capped it all was the fact that you needed to align you need to align uh, the confessions of your lips, which is your conscious confession with what is going on in your heart, which happens at the subconscious level, what is perhaps even more important than what you say with your lips, because usually the way we are programmed, the heart and the subconscious will always, will always override um, the confessions of the lip or what we do consciously and so there is a need for us to work actively towards aligning both in order to get the powerful impact and, um, and outcomes that we require. So those three things, but before Pastor even got to those three things, several other uh, uh, nuggets of wisdom uh, uh, came out and what, I mean, um, with one of them was that with God's promise you need to uh, go within the veil uh, and that is into God's presence and um, for you to do that um, you must consciously make yourself available for it and uh, do not make the mistake of thinking that whatever promise God has given you is going to happen in the marketplace like you like to call it but it will happen in his presence within the veil and so you must make the effort to prepare yourself body soul mind and spirit to enter into his presence behind the veil in order to receive uh, the power and the instruction that will lead to the outcomes of your faith. And when we come into His presence, there is a release of power 
uh, you are imbued with the skill and the necessary uh, 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 wherewithal to be able to achieve and transact that power into full manifestation in the marketplace. So it's not going to the marketplace first, it is going into its presence and along The Word of God has entered into our various lives. We are able to not just download them, but be able to manifest them. We are very particular about manifesting uh, in, in TCN. It's not, we are not just hearers, but we love to be known and to be seen as doers. So that was um, today's service. The second service was the first one that we are giving. We are um, uh, preparing for the, the third service, which will be the second one to be beamed uh, uh, live and that would start at uh, 10.45 Nigeria time so if for whatever reason you missed part of this or someone you would love to uh, um, attend or to watch with you missed it, this will be the time to give them a heads up to prepare for the 10.45 uh, service which will start in a few minutes Nigeria time. But before I go, just two quick announcements. The first one is that our International Conference for Pastors, Ministers, Leaders and Workers, ICPML, uh, is happening for this year in the month of August. It, it starts on the 30th of August and ends on the 2nd of September. So if you fall into any of these categories, are you a pastor, a minister, a leader in church, a worker, please prepare yourself um, and register. Go to our website and register to attend. It's going to be physical and virtual. But if you are in the city of Lagos, it will be happening here, right here at, at our Igomu Center, right beside the National Theater in Igomu, Lagos. But if for any reason you are unable to come physically, we'll be more than happy to host you online. So please register and prepare yourself to attend. Calendarize it now so that it does not, the other things do not clash with it. And begin to prayerfully prepare towards it. I will look forward to seeing you there. Second thing is, as has already been announced, uh, we have started Saturday services at our Igomu Center. They happen at 5 p.m. on Saturday evenings. So please feel free to come in. It's also an opportunity for you to uh, channel your uh, teenagers and youths that you have in your life to also have a different kind of uh, expression and experience of uh, church service on a day different from the um, traditional Sunday morning. So we look forward to having you, but that does not suggest that it's only for youths and, uh, uh, and teenagers. It is for everyone. It's actually a full service. It's just holding on a different day and at a different time. 5 p.m. Saturday, we look forward to having you. Having said that, we have come to the end of this service. 
and uh, we thank you once again for joining especially those who are joining us for the very first time we welcome you we are very happy you were able to make it and we look forward to having you join us again remember to follow us on all our handles and to follow pastor Koju at, at pastor Koju on all his handles as well and when you have testimonies please 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 do not forget to drop them we are so eagerly looking forward to having them thank you so much for joining us have a wonderful rest of the year god bless you